the Kremlin says that President Trump and President Putin will sit down for talks and a date and place will be announced by Moscow and Washington on Thursday. An aide to the Kremlin, Yuri Ashikov, suggested that the meeting could take place independently of President Trump's trip next month to Europe, saying according to Reuters that it would require weeks of preparation. That could also mean that the talk would take place at the tail end of the president's voyage abroad. Russian state media previously said it be July 15 in Austria. The announcement came as you. As National Security Advisor John Bolton was in Moscow meeting with Vladimir Putin. The White House confirmed Wednesday that they were discussing a possible summit. Over the weekend, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said a meeting between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin would be helpful to the country's relations, in spite of a view's assessment that Russia is trying to meddle in the midterm elections. The top U.S. diplomat told CNN, the Russians, unlike the Europeans, don't share our value set. However, he said a conversation with Russia is one worth having so that the two nations can try to put their relationship back on track. Whether it's the battlefield in Syria, the situation in Ukraine, the Russians' active measures, Pompeo said. I am sure there are many topics that President Trump and President Putin will discuss, and each of them is important to trying to put the relationship back in place with a common set of understandings. Russia's interference in the 2016 election has been a sore spot for the president who has campaign associates who've been probed in response to allegations that they were in on it. Trump has said at times that he believes Russia did do it only to come back and claim that he believes the Kremlin heads claims that the country didn't. The U.S. intelligence community has repeatedly warned that the November elections are ripe for additional attempts at disruption. Still, Trump has said he believes it would be better for the U.S. and sanctioned nation to have a dialogue. President Obama lost Crimea. Obama lost Crimea because President Putin didn't respect President Obama, didn't respect our country, and didn't respect Ukraine, Trump told Daily Mail. Com and other reporters on the North Lawn of the White House earlier this month, Trump implied that he believes that he will not have the same problems. Director of National Intelligence Dan Coates said this month, however, that it's his assessment that Russia is attempting to influence the midterm elections in the United States in November as well as divide the transatlantic alliance. These Russian actions are purposeful and premeditated, and they represent an all-out assault by Vladimir Putin on the rule of law, Western ideals and democratic norms, he told the Atlantic Council. As CIA director in January, Pompeo also concluded, the Russians have been at this a long time, and I fully expect they'll continue to be at it. We will push back in a way that is sufficiently robust that the impact they have on our election won't be great. He told the BBC. Share this article share in an interview published Tuesday, Pompeo, now the Secretary of State, told CNN that Trump agrees Russia interfering in our election is something they simply cannot do, and he does not believe the president would take any umbrage with that. But he said, to say there is a single issue that is caused there to not to be a warm relationship between the two countries is a misnomer. The administration is gearing has making moves for Trump and Putin to meet in July while the U. As president is traveling Europe. If the conversation occurs, it is likely to take place on July 15 or 16 in Vienna. The Kremlin was not ready on Sunday to confirm reports that it would be July 15 that have circulating in Austria. And a White House official would only say that it was possible the meeting would occur after President Trump's two day trip to Scotland. Pompeo has indicated in recent interviews, however, that the face-to-face -face talk would take place without providing the exact details. Trump's top national security adviser John Bolton also laid the groundwork this week for a possible U.S. Russia summit. He's making a trip to Moscow, where he'll be met with questions about how the U.S. is handling the civil war in Syria. The state-run RIA Novosti news agency cited Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bogdanov on Monday, saying the war-torn nation will be on his agenda.
Bolton spokesman Garrett Markey first mentioned the likelihood of a Russia journey last week in a tweet, saying he would travel to Moscow after stops in London and Rome to discuss a potential meeting between Presidents Trump and Putin. At the time, Putin spokesman Dmitry Peskov deflected questions about whether the two leaders would meet when Trump travels to Europe the week after next for a NATO summit. We have nothing to say yet, and if and when we are ready we will make the relevant statement," Peskov said then. Washington-Moscow ties have been strained by the special counsel Russia probe into election meddling and alleged Trump campaign collusion. Trump added stress when he pulled out of the Obama-era Iran nuclear deal. The U.S. has also been street fist in its condemnation of the Kremlin for a poisoning attack of a former Russian spy in the United Kingdom. The last Trump-Putin meeting was a brief encounter in November 2017 during an APEC leaders' summit in Vietnam. But Pompeo said in an interview broadcast Saturday that he expects Bolton's visit to bear fruit in the form of a bilateral summit. I think it's likely President Trump will be meeting with his counterpart in the not-too-distant future following that meeting," Pompeo said in an interview with conservative talk radio host Hugh Hewitt. Pompeo said the US was trying to find places where we have overlapping interests with Russia but protecting American interests where we do not. Just prior to the interview, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov emphasized that Moscow was ready for contacts with Washington and also said any agreement on a high-level meeting would be announced in advance of it. Trump and Putin discussed a face-to-face -face meeting in March when Trump called the Russian leader to congratulate him on his re-election. Both the White House and Kremlin revealed that Trump had invited Putin to visit the White House. That raised eyebrows among Democrats who have long suggested a cozy relationship between the two men led to Trump's election victory in 2016. Trump said June 15 during an unannounced gaggle with reporters outside the White House that it's possible he could sit down for a Putin summit in July, and it's much better if we get along with them than if we don't. He was responding to questions about his assertion that Putin's government should be readmitted to the G7 group of nations, which was known as the G8 before Russia sent troops into Crimea in 2014 and seized the Black Sea Peninsula from neighboring Ukraine. Trump blamed his predecessor, Barack Obama, for that turn of events. Putin didn't respect President Obama, he said. President Obama lost Crimea, just so you understand. This was long before I got there. Austria has offered to host a Trump-Putin summit, which a White House official said Monday could happen after the president's July trip is over. In addition to the two-day NATO summit in Brussels, he is scheduled to spend a day in London and two more in Scotland, where his real estate management company owns two-story golf courses. That would make July 16 the likely date for the Russian summit, 